Greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every weekend just for you. Same time, same station. I'm always here. And I thank you for being there for me. I love this show. I love sharing information. People have shared information with me when I was at a pretty dark side. I was grossly overweight. I had depression. You know, I was a mess. But I ate terribly. My meal was nothing but junk, sugar, carbohydrates, and garbage. And I was like garbage. Garbage in, garbage out. All based on my choices. But a few angels in my life changed in my life, angels on earth, that changed my life. And now I hope I can change somebody else's life. Because, you know, drugs don't make a difference in regards to your health. They're an important part of our medical society. If you don't, want to, you don't want to be run over with a car and wish you had some more vitamin C. You want medicine, you want drugs, you want surgery, if that may be a possibility. But drugs don't make us healthy. Doctors don't know anything. And I'm not picking on doctors, but it's a fact. And if you ask a really honest doctor, he'll tell you, I don't know anything about nutrition or health. Just eat a balanced diet. That's it. That's what they say. Eat a balanced diet. Well, I tried that, but I tipped over because I was only standing on one leg. I thought I had a balance, but I didn't. But really, we, we need to take the health of our own body into our hands. We are the ones that make the choices as to what we eat, how much exercise we get, how much sleep we get, Everything we do, everything we do is a choice behind what we do. We choose our life. And 98% of all diseases are caused by lifestyle choices. That's a fact. But drug companies don't want you to know that. And doctors don't know that. They want to sell drugs. Medicines that are extremely expensive. And they hook you on three, four, five, six prescriptions. And many more for some people. So I'd like to just share with you information that you can have a better lifestyle, a better quality of life, and be healthier. And I don't care how bad off you are right now. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what condition you're in. I don't, care, I don't care what kind of indications you are, you are challenged with, what kind of so-called diseases. They're not diseases, they're lack of nutrients. When we don't get enough of the right nutrients, the right diet, our body malfunctions. It breaks down, just like your car breaks down if you don't take care of it. So we need to make choices. So I want to share with you you know, I wrote about 10 or 12 books in the last, oh, probably the last year and a half. And I'm here with you in, for an hour. But when you read a book, you can go back and reread it. You can mark it up. I like to do, I, I love reading from a book. I hate reading from a computer. Now, I do research on a computer to find what I want to read, and then I print it. After I find the research that I want, when I find the study that I want, when I find the clinical data that I want, I print it. I print the study. I print all the information. I print the research, and I take it home with me. And that's my nighttime reading. I read all the printed documents that I have research during the day. So reading, I highlight it with a yellow marker. I mark it up. 
and make references on it. I'm, I just, it looks like, wow, it looks like Greek. Hey, by the way, too, I wrote a book called The Mediterranean Anti-Aging Secret to Vibrant Health from Greek Mountain Tea. Now, this is an ancient cure-all often called shepherd's tea and harvested in the Greek mountains. But modern science, this is interesting. For centuries or hundreds of years, populations of a country have consumed some remedy, maybe an herb or some kind of plant or some kind of tree, and they maintain good health. They live longer, live better. They don't have heart disease. They don't have cancer. And then modern science finally proves that. But all the proof has been the use of it by the population of that country for hundreds of years. So modern science has proven Greek mountain sea's ability to combat Alzheimer's disease, dementia, lower the risk of heart attacks and strokes, improve digestive health, promote weight loss, reduce insulin resistance, like type 2 diabetes, which is not a disease. It's all trumped up by the drug companies. And Greek mountain tea relieves joint pain and more. This is a, you know, the shepherds, and why it's called the shepherd's tea, because while they're tending their flocks of sheep, they would pick the weeds wild in the mountain areas, and they would make a tea of it and drink it. And they found good health from drinking this tea. But now a lot of people don't like to drink tea. But now we found that the Greek mountain tea, the weeds, the plants, whatever it is that they picked wild in the mountains of Greece are now found in capsule form so you don't have to drink it. And there is very, when you drink tea, it's very, very weak. But when you have capsules of concentrated plant extracts, they're much, much more powerful than drinking tea. So I I have, in fact, you can find all my books on my website, terrytalksnutrition.com. All the books are there for you to purchase and read. And now my brand, brand new book is called Reduce Fatty Liver Disease with an Herbal Medicine. Now, when I wrote this book, I co-authored the, authored this book with Dr. Lexi Locke, a naturopathic physician who is highly regarded for her knowledge and expertise in health and nutrition. And in this book, now you can learn how to combine proper lifestyle choices. Lifestyle choices, that's all what it is. Diet is the number one food or supplement, I don't care what you call it, whatever you eat is the foundation of your health. And supplements and exercise. Now, you will learn what power, what powerful botanicals from nature are to use to treat and prevent non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and other liver diseases and conditions and to, and to detoxify the body. You know, one time we had what was called alcoholic liver disease. Alcoholics that drank hard liquor, scotch, vodka, whatever. It destroyed their liver. And the liver became scarred and hardened cirrhosis of the liver 
than death or cancer. Now we have what is called non-alcoholic. That means there was no alcohol in the use of it. But we still have people, 30 to 40 million Americans, and 18% of our children have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and the, and the, and the drug companies are, are they're, they're just trying to find a drug to sell to cure this disease. But it's not a disease. What's causing all the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? Sugar and carbohydrates that eventually become sugar as it metabolizes in the body for energy. And they don't know they have a unhealthy liver until it's quite late in the destruction of the liver. There's no drug. Drug companies are just competitive, com- competitive with one another to find a drug. That's what it's all about. But it's diet. 18% of our children have a fatty liver disease and 30 to 40 million Americans. This is one of the epidemics today. It's a pandemic of liver disease. And these books are available on my website. We're going to also talk about how to have fast relief for pain. We'll talk about that today. And why artificial sweeteners make you fat. Well, there's no calories. How does it make you fat? It increases body fat. And no matter what age you are, what age, 0 to 100, you need vitamin D. D like in dog. And then we're going to take a closer look at the thymus gland. We don't hear that very often. Why, why, what, what is the thymus gland for? What does it do? And how can it help us be healthier? And do we need to really do something special to make it healthier? Strawberries. Now, I recommend that you get organic strawberries. Because strawberries are the number one sprayed, sprayed, and sprayed with pesticides. The number one fruit. But if you eat strawberries, it's highly beneficial for your brain. And we'll talk about rose hips. You know the roses, and you see that little berry, the little knob on the branches? That's the rose hip. And it has plenty of good value for your joints. And I have a lot more to talk about today, but you know this hour goes by so fast, we never get to the end of our topics. But let's talk about pain. What, what about pain? What can we do to get rid of pain? And how can we do it naturally? That would be the best thing to do. Natural pain relief. Without side effects. Without damaging the joints. Because, you know, a lot of the synthetic drug pain relievers give you temporary relief, but continue to damage the joint even more than it was before. Now, for example, curcumin. That very special extract from turmeric. There's a big difference. Curcumin is an ingredient, it's a key ingredient in turmeric, in the root of the plant. But it has to be purified and concentrated up to 95% purity. 95% curcumin. There's only about 2 to 4% curcumin in the root of turmeric. So in some cases, a really good curcumin that is bound to turmeric essential oils is 500 times stronger. One capsule of curcumin is equal to 500 capsules of turmeric. 
and it reduces the intensity of muscle pain, reduces muscle damage, has an anti-inflammatory effect, and it's backed by clinical trial, trials and studies. The result shows that it reduces muscle pain and increases athletic performance. Speeds recovery after exercise. Reduces exercise induced inflammation. Now you want fast pain relief. You don't want to have it, well, it's nice to have the pain relieved and even if it took a couple couple of weeks or three weeks or four weeks, you might still be happy. But this is fast pain relief. And it's been tested, clinically studied. Healthy adults with acute muscle pain. They were given an herbal pain blend of curcumin, boswellia, with black sesame seed oil. And this combination in a soft gel capsule was given to a group of patients that had severe arthritis and another portion of that population of pain adults were given an OTC drug, pain drug, once a day in the morning for seven days. Seven days. This proprietary herbal pain blend, curcumin and boswellia in sesame seed oil, a thousand milligrams based on two soft gels. And the OTC pain drug, acetaminophen, a thousand milligrams, two tablets. Now, half the population of the study got the two soft gels that contained curcumin boswellia in a black sesame seed oil, which increases absorption faster than OTC pain drugs. And the result of this combination. Half were given the natural pain reliever, half were given a drug. What were the results? Well, both groups had equally effective pain relief. Equal. So if it's equal, why wouldn't you do the natural pain remedy that doesn't have side effects? Where acetaminophen, get this, acetaminophen is the number one cause of liver failure in the U.S. It damages the liver. And yet, which is called Tylenol, and yet we have baby Tylenol. We have it in liquid form. It's available over the counter. It is so damaging to the body that it should be on prescription. But that's not what the drug companies want. They fight that all the way to the highest position in the government to have it over the counter so more people will buy it. And when people buy it, they feel, well, it can't be too damaging because it's over the counter. It's not on a prescription. It's not dangerous. So they take more than they should, causing more damage. 60,000 people die from these kinds of drugs every year by taking these drugs. So you could be at a higher risk, not just of liver disease or liver cancer or cirrhosis of the liver, but death. When both groups, those that took the natural pain reliever and those that took the drug had equally effective pain relief. But the bonus is Those taking the herbal pain blend had no side effects. It was not dangerous to their health. And it made a lot of other conditions more bearable. Now, the herbal pain blend was eight times, eight, eight times better in reducing the emotional aspects of acute pain, the unpleasantness of acute pain. By that I mean they still had pain 
but they had a better attitude. They felt better. When they were on Tylenol, they had pain relief, but they were unhappy. They were very moody, irritable. You know, when you walk into a grocery store and you accidentally bump, bump into somebody and they bite your head off, you know, you got to cut them some slack. They may be in pain and they probably on Tylenol and it's not doing very much. But when you're on the herbal pain blend, not only did you get rid of the pain, but you were happier. You had a better attitude. You were emotionally, emotionally adjusted. And the result of this herbal pain, pain blend was detectable with the very first dose. As soon as one hour after taking the curcumin, boswellia, black sesame seed oil combination, and no side effect, no adverse e effects or, or nothing to be afraid of, no danger. And it's not just for muscle pain. In rheumatoid arthritis, the patients were given a combination of curcumin, reduced pain and swelling more effectively, more effectively than a prescription drug. And 14% of patients in the drug group dropped out because of serious adverse effects, side effects, while zero, zero populations or participants in the curcumin group dropped out. It was safer. They didn't get side effects. It didn't damage their body. It didn't give them stomach or liver or kidney problems. And in another study of curcumin versus ibuprofen in patients with arthritis, the curcumin group had less pain and better ability to walk upstairs and walk a distance more effectively than ibuprofen without side effects. You know there's side effects to ibuprofen. There's side effects to Tylenol. And when you have natural remedies that are just as effective as Tylenol, as ibuprofen, Advil, any one of those drugs, that always have side effects. The combination of curcumin and boswellia relieved arthritis pain more effectively than a prescription drug. An NSAID, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. 14% of patients were pain-free after three months versus 7% of the drug group without adverse effects. So taking a natural remedy has been found to be more effective or at least as effective as a drug and no side effects. That's the best way to do it. So how do you relieve your pain? Well, find the fast-acting pain relief product, a combination of curcumin and boswellia blended with black sesame seed oil. The black sesame seed oil increases the absorption of the two herbs. And that's why you get fast relief. A thousand milligrams. That's equal to two soft gels of the blend once or more daily. You can do it two, three, four times a day if you like. If you need to, if your pain is that bad and you need to, Everybody has a different degree of pain, a different tolerance to pain. And of course, people are not living a very good quality of life. They smoke, they drink heavily, they're not eating right. But then you have somebody else that is really eating well and they're getting good, a good night's sleep and they're exercising. Well, the one that's doing all the good things is going to get faster relief of their pain. And the one that is smoking, drinking, and eating junk food for, for their for their diet. Um, they're just not helping their body recover from the pain. So you want to do everything possible to make it possible to relieve the pain. 
Artificial sweeteners. Oh, everybody thinks they're, they're great. Well, I don't eat sugar. I don't use sugar in my coffee. I don't put sugar in my tea. Oh, I just use a good artificial sweetener, no calories, and it tastes just as sweet as sugar. Well, is it good? Well, here's a new study on diet soda and abdominal fat. The data was collected from 3,000 men and women who are young adults when the study began in 1985. And over the years, these participants provided a detailed information on their nutrition intake and their health during their 25-year in the study. 25-year-old study, that's a magnificent study, 25 years. And the participants received the artificial sweetener and then they had CT scans to measure their abdominal fat levels. And the results, after controlling for other nutritional intake, participants in this study with the highest levels of diet soda intake, that's like five or more a day, had the visceral fat, which is the worst kind of fat you can have, the more dangerous fat, and their fat levels were 10% higher than the subjects who consumed little or no diet soda. Visceral fat is that most dangerous type of fat within the abdominal cavity. And women with the highest levels of visceral belly fat have seven times increased risk of diabetes, 20% greater risk of heart, heart attack, 37% more likely to develop asthma, almost twice as likely to develop invasive breast cancer, even if the total BMI is normal. All from artificial sweeteners. They're junk. Throw them out. Don't use them. Use a little bit of honey. And that, my friends, I've got to pause for a few moments to let this nation identify itself and some commercials, and I'll be right back here. So please come right back here. This is Terry Naturally. Terry Talks Nutrition. And welcome back, my friends. We're here for another half hour or so. We'll be here to the top of the hour, and we bring you more information how to be healthier and happier and have a better quality of life and live longer. I always say, I want to die young, better, but at a very old age. We can stay younger. We're going to all pass away. And we all may live up to what, 80, 90, or what, 95. But most people say, I don't want to live. I would feel terrible. I'd rather go now. I don't want to live longer and live like this. Well, my friends, you don't have to live like this. You are the one that makes a choice as to what you eat. And I guarantee you that what you eat is like the fuel you put in your car. If you put sugar in your gas tank, it's not going to work very well. If you put junk in your car, it's not going to work very well. And you put junk in you, junk food, garbage, Lots of sugar, lots of carbohydrates. Adopt the ketogenic diet or the paleo diet or the Mediterranean diet. They're all very healthy diets that can be better for you and your health. What you eat is the foundation of your health. So no matter your age, you can live longer, live healthier, without complications. So this is very important that you dump the artificial sweeteners. Be healthy. And no matter what your age, you can't get healthier. But you may need vitamin D. No matter how old you are, you will need vitamin D to be healthy. D like in dog. It makes a huge difference. Young or old, you need more vitamin D. And I'm not preaching. I'm trying to emphasize. I'm trying to impress upon you the 
the power of these vitamins and minerals like nothing else, not like drugs. They, they have even proven that children, children with low vitamin D levels are more susceptible to respiratory tract infections. You know, we just went through two years of COVID-19, primarily upper respiratory tract infections. And one study found that almost 300 children with respiratory infection, only 10% of those 300 children, that's 30, had normal levels of vitamin D. The rest were so deficient and so severely deficient, they were extremely susceptible to infection. And in contrast, 26% of healthy children in the control group had normal vitamin D levels and none of the healthy children were severely deficient in vitamin D. A study in Ireland, I found this one just recently, I thought it was very, it fit in just perfectly here. A study in Ireland found a connection between inflammation and low vitamin D levels in older adults. Now we have a marker in our body. It's called the C, like letter C, reactive protein, commonly referred to as CRP. It's a marker that tracks the inflammation in your body. And in this study of adults that were over the age of 50, three times as many people with vitamin D deficiency had high or very high CRP levels versus people with normal vitamin D levels. It lowers your inflammation, lowers the biomarker that indicates how much inflammation is in your body. Now, this test can be done by your physician. Now, the doctor can tell you what the CRP is, and the doctor will say, oh, you got a high level of inflammation in your body. Just don't take the drugs. You can do it naturally. Now, I'm not a doctor, and you should always listen to your doctor, but it would be my choice to know what my level was, but not to take a drug to lower the inflammation. And by the way, we have a lifestyle. You know, inflammation is not bad for us. You know, we all hear this, oh, how bad inflammation is, and we are a nation of inflammation. Yes, I agree. But inflammation is not bad. It's good. Because it's trying to make us healthy. When you do something to injure yourself, you sprained an ankle on a hike, you twisted your knee, you slammed your finger in the car door, what is the result of that injury? You're going to have lots of inflammation. That injured area is going to be hot to the touch. It's going to be swollen. There's going to be a lot of fluid under the skin that puffs up. It's going to hurt. But inflammation is there to heal that damaged area, whether it's a sprayed knee or twisted ankle or the car door, the finger in the car door. If you don't do that again, there's no need to have inflammation. It won't be there again. But luckily, if you twist your knee or sprain your ankle, inflammation will be back there again. So why do we have chronic inflammation in almost the entire population of America? Guess what? Diet. The American diet is pro-inflammatory. Sugar is pro-inflammatory. Carbohydrates is pro-inflammatory. Vegetable oils are pro-inflammatory. 
The American diet causes our bodies to be highly inflamed all the time so that we have inflammation all the time because the inflammation is trying to undo the damage done by your diet. Now, you would not be dumb enough to put your finger in the car door to slam it to get inflammation. But we continue to eat the same crap all the time and then we have inflammation and we say, oh, I need a drug. I need something. I hurt. Yeah, you're going to hurt because you're doing the wrong thing. You can't twist your knee. You can't sprain your ankle. You can't slam your finger in the car door without consequences. But no one has ever told you that I'm, I, maybe, that, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't, when, when I lecture, I, I don't find very, very many hands go up when I, when I ask how many people know that your diet, what you eat every day is causing your inflammation of your knee, inflammation of your hips, inflammation of your heart, inflammation of your brain, inflammation in all of your body, your diet. The American diet is nothing but garbage. Too much sugar, too many carbohydrates, too many junk types of food, all causing daily chronic inflammation that we hurt. Change your diet. I've talked to people that when I lecture, people come up to tell me, hey, Terry, I, t- I changed. Not, I didn't influence them that at the time, but maybe they heard it someplace else. They went on the ketogenic diet. Very, very little carbohydrates, no sugar, lots of good proteins, lots of good quality fats like olive oil. Olive oil is highly anti-inflammatory. Olive oil is the most powerful food in nature. It is the most, Mary Flynn, who's a PhD physician, not a physician, but PhD researcher who has studied olive oil for 30 years. She made it her lifetime study. And she said it's the most powerful food of any food that can reverse, treat, and cure every disease known to man. I mean, I mean, to humans, I guess you would say. That's how powerful food is. But we're eating the wrong food, and now we have all these chronic aches and pains, chronic inflammation that's destroying our body because it's chronic. It doesn't go away. When you sprain your knee, you twist your ankle, you slam your finger in the car door, in a week or two, that's all gone. Then the inflammation is all gone. And you would not be dumb enough to do it again. You're going to watch yourself when you're hiking. You're going to take care of your knees. You're not going to slam your finger in the car door. That wouldn't be fun. That'd be crazy. But we slam our body every day with garbage food, sugar, carbohydrates, and junk. And then we say, why aren't we healthy? Why do I have this chronic inflammation? So now we know that vitamin D can help in all these con- all these conditions. But what kind of vitamin D, and how much vitamin D? And I'll tell you my personal story. Vitamin D three is the same form of vitamin D as humans are. And animals. It's the natural form of vitamin D that the the sun would make when it reflects on the skin of the individual and causes a production of vitamin D. Vitamin D3 is natural. It is an animal form. That's the only way it's produced. It's produced in our body. But D2 is the plant form of vitamin D and is not natural. It's synthetic. And it's about half as effective as the D3. So you want D3. Now, researchers compared supplemental vitamin D3 and D2, 600 IUs or a placebo, a fake pill, in 335 women during two consecutive winters. The placebo group saw a 25% decline decline during this period of vitamin D level. Vitamin D2, now these, this is the bad one. It's not the good kind. Vitamin D2 had 34% 
increase in vitamin D. But now the winner of this study, vitamin D3. The D3 group had 75% increase in vitamin D in their body. And vitamin D3 was twice as effective at increasing vitamin D levels. So now experts recommend 5,000 IU of vitamin D daily for most people. Now I say for most people. Maybe I'm different. But here's my personal story. They test your blood to find a level of vitamin D in your body. Vitamin D is so important for COVID-19, for infection, for upper respiratory tract infection, uh, inflammation. It, it's what the creator wanted our body to manufacture. So as the sun hits our body, our body will make vitamin D3. And it makes up to 20,000 IUs of vitamin D3 daily in our bodies. 20,000. The FDA, FDA has always stated only 400 IUs of vitamin D3. Otherwise, you'll have brain damage, you'll have tumors. Oh, you know, they go on with all this garbage. Now, most doctors are happy when you have 30 nanograms per deciliter of blood of vitamin D3. 30. All the great experts of alternative medicine, they want to see it at least 60 or more, at least twice as much as the doctors. I was taking 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3. That's why I think it's really great to have your, your, your levels of vitamin D tested. I was taking 10,000. Wow, experts recommend 5,000. I'm twice as good. And my vitamin D level in my body was just about 45, not 60. Better than 30, but not as good as 60. So uh, I jumped it up to 20,000 IU of vitamin D3. And now I'm in a range of 60 to 80, which is very, very effective for reducing a variety of diseases, infection, upper respiratory tract infection, boosts the immune system. And in fact, it's one of the most powerful for the immune system. Now, at the beginning of the show, I asked you if you knew what the thymus gland was. Thymus gland. You know, actually, sometimes people eat this as a delicacy. Sweetbreads is a thymus gland. If we go to a fancy, especially a French restaurant, and they have sweetbreads, that's the thymus gland of the animal. In us, it sits right below the thyroid, in the base of the neck. You know, where the little, you know that little hollow that you have in your neck? It's right in that area, the thymus gland. And it could be saving your life, seriously. And yet we hear very little about the thymus gland. Now, when we are an infant, our thymus gland is, well, I should say it looks like a walnut. And it's about a walnut-sized gland in your chest, right in that little crook in your neck. It is the largest when we are children and shrinks as we age. Now, they're trying to determine why it shrinks. Does it shrink because of the aging process? Or do we age because it shrinks? And the thymus gland is the gland that controls the immune system. And it secretes white blood vessels, excuse me, white blood cells 
which fight infection. You know, sometimes we just learned recently because for a long time, the thymus gland was considered useless to adults and was often found and often removed during chest surgery to get it out of the way of the surgeon. But in a study comparing the health of patients who had their thymus gland removed versus those who did not have it removed, the researchers found risk of death from diseases including cancer and autoimmune diseases was almost three times higher in those that had the gland removed and still for those that had it in place. Three times more effective, three times higher than those who had it removed. So further analysis found that people without a thymus gland Remember, this controls the immune system. It had lower levels of infection and cancer-fighting T cells and higher levels of inflammatory markers. So what is the crucial nutrient that maintains the health of the thymus gland? Now, this is a, a theory, not conclusive. But they think zinc deficiency may be responsible for age-related decline in thymus function. When an infant is born, as I said before, the, th the, th the thymus gland is about the size of a walnut and it gets smaller and shrinks over time. In a 90-year-old person, the thymus gland is the size of a pea. So it doesn't have a very strong effect on the body when it's so small. In an animal study, zinc supplementation reversed thymus gland shrinking associated with aging. Six months of zinc supplementation in aged animals. Now get this. Zinc restored the thymus gland function to near the levels observed in young children and animals. In a human clinical trial, zinc supplementation in zinc Deficient older adults was associated with a 29% increase in blood T cell levels. Now, the type of zinc you want, because not everything is absorbed equally. There are many different kinds of zinc. There are many different kinds of all the nutrients and the herbs but they all are not absorbed as well. The best absorbed form of zinc is called zinc bisglycinate chelate. Now that's a mouthful. But this is the kind of zinc that's attached to a amino acid called glycinate. Minerals are not very easily absorbable from the intestinal tract through the lining of the intestinal tract into the blood to be transported to all the various cells that depend on zinc, like the thymus gland. But when you, chelation is a process, if you can relate to what a, a lobster, lobster's claw looks like, That's what chelation is. The zinc is inside the combination of the amino acid. And amino acids are protein. And they're very easily absorbable. So when the zinc is combined and chelated to, bound to, it means that it's bound by 
the amino acid. Amino acids, they're, oh, come on in. You can come in because you're very easily absorbable. Well, through that process, it pulls the zinc in with it. So it makes it much more well-absorbed than without the bisglycinate. It's the most absorbed form of zinc. So the best combination. The two most powerful minerals I know for the health of the thymus gland and the immune system is zinc and selenium. Very, very powerful. Even in farming, when cows have infection, most of the farmers or the vets know that they are deficient in selenium. So I would find a combination of 30 milligrams of zinc, a bisglycinate, 200 micrograms of selenium for optimal support of the immune system and the thymus gland. Very, very important to have this combination of nutrients. If we don't have zinc and selenium, if our diet is deficient, in fact, zinc deficiency and selenium deficiency affects 3 billion people worldwide, particularly in China and North Europe, Northern Europe, and some parts of the United States. If you're deficient in zinc and selenium, you have lost the ability to maintain a healthy, optimal level of the immune system and the thymus gland. So very critical that you repair the damage done by a deficiency of zinc and selenium. Also, while we're talking about minerals, what about magnesium? You can avoid the side effects of magnesium. I just recently ran into a young lady in a health food store who was looking over all the different forms of magnesium. And I said, you look very confused. She said, well, my doctor gave me a prescription for magnesium. I said, well, that's good, that's great. What kind of magnesium? Magnesium oxide. Hmm, I said, do you know that magnesium oxide causes diarrhea? Ooh, doctor didn't tell me that. Um, you know, I believe your doctor doesn't know that. So has your doctor recommended or prescribed a magnesium supplement? Doctors frequently prescribe supplemental magnesium oxide. Inexpensive. A lot of products contain it. And the problem with magnesium oxide is that it is a poor source of magnesium. Less than 5% bioavailability creates a laxative effect, diarrhea, draws water into the intestinal tract to cause a bowel movement, and this form of magnesium is used to treat constipation. Choose a magnesium bisglycinate. I talked about zinc bisglycinate. This is magnesium bisglycinate. Better and faster absorption. No water attracted into the intestinal tract, making you have a form of a firm stool rather than a liquid stool. I had a woman, she, she, they couldn't find out why she had diarrhea. And eventually after six months of going to physicians, they found out that she was taking magnesium oxide that caused her to have diarrhea. She thought she was doing something good for her health. Be careful of what you buy. Make it a better choice for people who are prone to diarrhea. Stay away from magnesium oxide. Use magnesium bisglycinate chelate. But that, my friends, we're all out of time. That hour flew by so fast. It was so enjoyable to be with you. And I will tell you what. Say a prayer for this crazy world. And I'll be back here same time, same station next week. God bless you, my friends. And God bless this great country. 
Thank you for listening to Terry Talks Nutrition Weekly Show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio.